Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at Ajax polling, and we're going to look at specifically polling a JSON file. And don't worry if you don't know what a JSON file is, we're going to pull a JSON file and pull back a specific piece of data and let the uh, call to this file refresh over and over again, or poll or hit or whatever you want to call it again and again and again, um, so we can update the value on the page. So this is, pro uh, you know, uh, a popular way to basically just refresh what you see on the screen. We're going to look at a very, very basic example, and perhaps not the best example because this is infinite polling. It will never, ever stop. Um, but if you need something like this, then uh, it could well work for you depending on your data source and uh, a variety of other things. But let's take a look at how this works. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pull up my text editor. I have a JSON file here open already with a user's property and a value of uh, 1200. And you can see that reflected here. So this value here that you see uh, is exactly the same as what you see here. Now what's actually happening is in my network tab in Chrome, you can see that every two seconds this is actually polling this users.json file. You can keep up to uh, speed with how many requests are being made down here and you can see that every couple of seconds that's actually just increasing. So what's actually happening is it's polling for this, this file. If we click on this we can see that we get a, a value back here and that's directly drawn from that JSON file and uh, we're using jQuery which is uh, ex you know exceptional at handling uh, j uh, polling or uh, Ajax requests sorry so if I go ahead and just change this value maybe we go up to 1300 users you can see that the next time that that refreshes you saw the value up there just change to 1300 so this file here could come from anywhere really it could be database generated um, so when the uh, when Ajax well, when you Ajax to a file on your server, your server could then maybe pull the count of all users and then it put it in there. This could be a cached file, so it might have a layer of caching on it. Whatever. We're basically going to look at the front end code that we need to actually make this work. So let's go ahead and uh, and do that now. So if we head over to our index file, we can see that currently it's blank. We've got nothing here at all. And subsequently in our browser, we've got absolutely nothing. Refresh the page, there's no content here at all. So we'll start out just by creating our little paragraph that we saw so we can sort of set this up. So I'm just going to say we have X amazing users. Now, what are we going to put in place of this X? Well, we need somewhere to target and actually place this value. So I'm going to go ahead and create a span. And what this allows allow me to do is just have an inline element basically with a certain value in here. And I'm going to give this a class of user count. So we'll specifically target that down here with our JavaScript. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use Google hosted libraries to bring in jQuery. If you've not used uh, jQuery before, there's not really too much to explain here. It's literally just a JavaScript library. Um, so Google hosted libraries provides this um, served as a, from a content delivery network. So we can just go ahead and copy this in and paste this into our page just at the bottom of our body. I'm going to go ahead and just change this to HTTP because it's going to be pretty slow for, uh, since I'm on my local machine. And yeah, essentially that's just bringing in jQuery. All this allows us to do, um, if you're not familiar with jQuery, is just basically use uh, work in JavaScript but work extremely quickly because this provides us hooks, different things that we need to do. So Ajaxing is extremely easy with this. So what do we want to do? Well, I'm going to do everything on this on this page just to save uh, sort of creating a new file and stuff. But we want to go ahead and just open and close script tags here. Uh, we've already got jQuery loaded in so we can go ahead and start writing code down here underneath where it's loaded. Uh, I, you know, ideally and ordinarily, you'd have this in a separate file. But let's just go ahead and uh, and look at what we might do. The first thing we're going to do is look at the interval that we want to create. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a function. And this is going to be a sort of wrapper for everything here. And inside of here, I'm going to go ahead and just set an interval. So we have this set interval function in JavaScript. This is nothing to do with jQuery. And then within this, we have a function. And we want to do something in here uh, every X amount of milliseconds. And in this case, it's going to be 2,000 milliseconds. So I'm going to go ahead and just console log poll. And what this is going to do is, once this function is run, this means it will run set interval. We run everything within this function every two seconds. Now what this won't do 
is it what it will wait two seconds before it pulls so we'll need to sort of uh, take that into account later as well so when i go ahead and refresh we've got we have nothing amazing users that's fine if we go ahead to our console though you can see that this number in the blue circle is increasing if I refresh again, we wait two seconds, poll appears, and then it will do exactly the same thing. The, the number in the circle just means that this same thing is being output to the console. So what we want to do now is we obviously don't want a console log, but that's the idea of how we poll something. What we do want to do is call a function within here to actually, uh, th this function is going to Ajax to our content. And that uh, sort of functionality is going to be contained within a function called poll. So this is effectively the same as doing what we've already seen. If I console log poll function, and then in here I call poll, then we can go ahead and see it does pretty much exactly the same thing. So we just see poll function, and then again and again and again every two seconds. So now that we've got that wrapped up, we can actually include our Ajax functionality inside of here. Now what we want to do is use the Ajax method that's part of the jQuery library. This is one of the reasons I included jQuery because it makes it extremely easy to do this. Uh, we want to poll to the users.json file, which we have here. This basically just sits in the directory I'm working in. So you've got users.json there. And we want to go ahead and say that this data type we expect back is JSON. The type of the request is going to be a get request. And on success, we want to go ahead and read the value here and then apply it to this span. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we use dollar, which represents jQuery, and we use the Ajax method. So it's jQuery.ajax. You can go ahead and write it like that if you want, but uh, it's shorter to do this. So in this, we have an object, and this object contains all the properties and the values that we want to say to this Ajax function do. So in this case, we want to hit users.json. So this specifies the file that we hit. Now. As this stands, this will actually start to Ajax that file. If we go over to the network tab, you can see that every two seconds now we get this users.json appear here. So it is actually pulling this file. And you can see that if I click on it, we get the response back that we 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 would expect. We have a users property and the value. But that's not it. We need to go ahead and just do a few more things. So we don't really need to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and declare a data type. This just means that we say, oh, we're expecting JSON back. If you were doing this with XML, you would type XML because you might expect XML back. The type of the request is going to be get. We don't really need to supply that, but you know it makes sense to do so. And we then have a, something called a callback function. And this callback function is when uh, when we successfully hit this file. If there's a problem, a network error, this won't be run. We we use error for that. Uh, we're not going to include that here, but um, I'll just include it anyway. So in success, what do we want to do? Well, I'll go ahead and just console log something again, just uh, to sort of prove that works. And let's go ahead and refresh now. So in the network tab, you can see we're hitting users.json, and in the console, we subsequently get uh, uh, this success uh, request back there. So if I just pull the console up there, you can see both at the same time. So we know that now we're successfully hitting that file, but we actually want to do something with the data now. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and enter data, which is one of the arguments from this success callback. And then I'm going to use jQuery selector again, another reason why I chose jQuery, it's extremely uh, easy to do so. I'm going to go ahead and select the user's count element, which is here. And I'm going to go ahead and use the text method to set some text. Now, we already know that data now represents the contents of this. And because it's JSON, it's extremely easy to work with. It's just dot notation. So we just say data dot users. And that will give us data, which is this entire file, dot users. So it will basically return 1300. So now that we've done that, that will now work. But we have one more thing to do after this. So uh, if I refresh, we wait two seconds. Uh, that um, span there is populated with this, and that will keep updating itself. So that's how easy it is to actually poll for data. There's one thing that we uh, are sort of missing here, and that is the fact that when I refresh the page, this stays blank for two seconds. And that's just uh, sort of naturally how set interval works. It will only execute whatever's in this function here after the uh, initial sort of period here. So there's a couple of ways we can do this, but because I've created this inside of a function, I can go ahead and just call that function before set interval. So that would mean that I poll first as soon as the user lands on the page and this script runs, and then I go ahead and set interval. 
So now when I go ahead and refresh, that automatically shows 1300 and then subsequently goes ahead and polls down here. So what I can now do is I'm going to go ahead and just pull this down and we'll test this out. So if, uh, for example, you know, we come back with 1500 users, that then changes and maybe 2500 users, it changes again. So this will just keep updating uh, as long as a user is actually sat on the page. So that's how we do uh, infinite polling with uh, jQuery and Ajaxing to a JSON file.